Magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from my HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards, and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where we're baking our way through the Harry Potter books, creating magical recipes every time we find an item of food and drink inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we created some Hogwarts house inspired homemade crumpets, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you don't want to miss a single recipe, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every magic Monday. It is time for another recipe, so let's make some magic. This week, we're moving on to chapter four of The Prisoner of Azkaban, The Leaky Cauldron. And as Harry is popping downstairs for breakfast, we see our next recipe, what looks suspiciously like a hag who ordered a plate of raw liver. That doesn't sound too appetizing, but let's give it a go. <laughs> Nobody panic, I know what you're thinking, but I can assure you we are not serving up raw liver this week. That would be one step too far. Instead, I thought we'd create something magical as close to raw liver as possible, and that's gonna be liver pate, which is a super smooth, soft spread, which goes great with croutons, baguettes, or crackers, and includes liver, so technically, we've ticked this one off the list as well, and I'm gonna throw in some extra Hogwarts flavors in there as well for an added touch of magic. Better yet, pate is super, super easy to make, so you can focus on those Hogwarts house toppings instead. First up, we need to make our pate say base, so this is all you need to do. To begin, I'm going to prepare the base of my liver pate by peeling and finely slicing my shallots, peeling my garlic, and then I'm going to crush that. And I'm also going to finely chop my rosemary and thyme. It's best to take this off the stalks first and then work over with your knife. Once those are ready, I'm then gonna place a pan on a medium heat and drizzle in some olive oil. Add in the shallots and garlic, and then fry that off for about one to two minutes until soft. I'm then gonna season that with my rosemary and thyme, as well as some salt and pepper. Cook that down for another one to two minutes, adding oil if it begins to catch. At this point, I'm gonna spread out my base and then add in my livers. You can use any liver that you like. I've gone for lamb livers, and these will take about two to three minutes to cook on each side. Once they've started to go golden, flip them over and allow them to cook through. At this point, you can add in some additional salt and pepper along with your sherry, and that should bubble up and simmer for about one to two minutes. You can buy a wide range of liver varieties. I've used lamb livers in this recipe as that's one that is very, very traditional with pate, but you can also find chicken, pork, and even duck if you're feeling a little bit fancy. They do have different flavors and textures, so try a couple and then find the one that is right for you. Make sure you don't overcook them though, as that is what can give pate that really grainy texture, which we definitely do not want. So as soon as it started to sear, and go brown on each side. That is when you want to flip it over, cook it, and then take it off the heat. To get our smooth pate, these then need to go into a food processor. So I'm gonna add those in, pop the lid on top, and then blend until smooth. I'm slowly going to incorporate my butter, which I've got at room temperature, so it's just softened, adding it in a tablespoon at a time. Keep on working through until all the butter has blended. If you'd like a super smooth pate, you then want to sieve this through to remove any of the finer pieces. This takes a little bit of time, but it will give you a much better texture at the end. Once that's all passed through, scrape any excess off the bottom and then stir that around. I'm then gonna place even servings into each of my jars, or you can make this in one large pate if you prefer. They can then go into the fridge to chill and firm up while we work on the toppings. 
Now, traditionally, pate is topped off with melted butter, which sets in the fridge. And the reason for that is to help preserve the meat inside. Bacteria doesn't grow well on fat, so it's a great way to add flavor and keep your pate fresh for longer. I'm gonna use this for the base of my Hogwarts house inspired toppings, but add in some flavors and some colors to show off a little house pride. Whichever house you fall into, it doesn't matter here. So follow your taste buds and let me know down below in the comments which house you'd go for. Our pate butter toppings are super easy to make. So I started off by dividing my butter and then I'm gonna melt those and that is the base of our topping. For our Gryffindor chili and paprika butter, I'm going to chop up my chili finely, take off the tops, slice it in half and remove the seeds before slicing into thin strips. I'm then gonna add my butter, chilies and paprika into a blender and then blitz that through. Our Hufflepuff topping is gonna to be garlic and rosemary flavor. So I'm just gonna crack my garlic as we're gonna take this out afterwards so it's best to leave it whole and also pull off a few sprigs of my rosemary. Add this into the melted butter and then you want to leave that to infuse for about five minutes. Next up is Slytherin, which is going to be a chimichurri butter topping. So I'm gonna pop all of the ingredients into my blender. That's butter, garlic, the rest of the chili, some parsley, and some red wine vinegar. Blitz that up until you have a nice sauce. And finally, the Kalamata olives are back for Ravenclaw. So I'm gonna add the butter and my olives, as well as some garlic into the blender and blitz that through until smooth. You can then take your pâtés out of the fridge and pour over your Hogwarts house butters. They should be nice and even, so pop those back into the fridge to set for about four hours, and then a Hogwarts house inspired liver pate is good to go. These are best served with fresh bread, baguettes, or croutons. So there you go, our Hogwarts house inspired liver pate recipe is complete. And if you are having yourself a fancy Harry Potter dinner party, then this is definitely a recipe to give a go. Let me know how yours turns out down below in the comments. That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. It's dinner time for me, so I'll see you next week.